would in your Bibles go with me to the book of Judges, chapter 15, starting at verse 15. The book of Judges, chapter 15, starting at verse 15. Judges 15, starting at verse 15. Brother Cam, can I get a little more juice in the mic there? <clears throat> yeah, just a tad bit. Make me sound like Barry. Amen. <laughs> some of y'all caught that, some of y'all didn't. That's all right. A <laughs> little, little bit more juice in the mic. There we go. Amen. Amen. Won't take some of y'all too far back. <laughs> Amen. Judges 15, starting at verse 15. Some of y'all used to jam off Barry now. Barry what? Amen. 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 Some of y'all here because Barry was singing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, some of y'all to see Jesus with Pastor Troy was preaching. Amen. Amen. Judges 15. Chapter 15, starting at verse 15. Everybody there? Amen. Amen. And he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass, I have slain a thousand men. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramath Lehi. And he was so athirst and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the, to the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. But God clave a hollow place that was in the jaw and there came water thereout and when he had drunk his spirit came again and he revived wherefore he called the name of that in Hakor, which is in Lehi unto this day and he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years let us bow blessed father speak O Lord I decrease may the power of your Holy Spirit increase speak that souls will come to you through Christ for salvation and that we, your saints, would be edified and strengthened by your word and that you be glorified. It's in Jesus' name we do ask it all and we ask, cleanse us by the blood, open up our spiritual ears that we may hear what the Spirit says to the church. Let us hear with understanding hearts, O Lord, and after we've heard, we ask for wisdom to apply your word to our lives. Amen. Children, you may be dismissed for children's church. We're going to let the children go out for children's church. Amen. Amen. You can listen uninterrupted. Amen. 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 That little, that little preacher, more than Paul. Amen. Amen. Just want to speak on the subject this morning. Lord, don't let me go out like this. Uh, y'all y'all ain't y'all ain't saying, Lord. Don't let me go out like this. Amen. 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 I don't know about y'all, but I've been been battling this year. And there has been times when I have to say, now Lord, I got too much work to do in your name. Now I can't go out like this. You, you, you got to touch me. And you, you got to change this thing according to your will. But I don't want to go out like this. If, if I go out, uh, I want to go out on top. Amen. 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 In today's message, we, we have a man who was from the tribe of Dan. Dan was one of the sons of Jacob. Uh, Samson was the 12th of the judges of Israel after the death of Joshua. Samson had father's name was Manoah. And Manoah's wife was barren, didn't have any children. They had been trying and, uh, and just couldn't produce. And uh, don't know at first, you know, thought maybe Manoah was swimming a little slow. 
for all of those of you in the medical terms, y'all know what that means. You were swimming a little slow. Uh, it may be, uh, nah, it ain't me. You know how brothers is, it ain't me. It's it, it you. So we, we put the blame, you know, that it ain't us, it's it, it you. I'm good. Maybe it's just the ground I'm putting the seed in. Oh, y'all ain't with me, you know. We, we start pointing at each other when things go wrong, don't we? We, we, we do. But, but, but God was restraining her from giving birth because he had something special in mind. And often when God is going to do something powerful and wonderful, he'll mess up our lives. He, he will restrain things. He will withhold blessings because he got a great blessing that's coming. And, and, and often, it ain't nothing that you've done. It's the sovereignty of God. So, so after a long time, God showed up under a tree, yes. sat down. And when the Lord came and sat down, this was the angel of the Lord. This was a, a theophany, actually an appearance of the Lord himself. And, and uh, when he got there, uh, Manoah's wife was there and uh, the angel spoke to her and said, Behold, thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Amen. Now, uh, you got to be aware. Now, don't, don't drink. No wine. Amen. Don't eat nothing. Don't, don't drink nothing strong. I mean, you can't, you don't, can't take no dollar shot. Uh, uh, all right? No, no, no mini Chevy and uh, no Carlos Rossi. Should I name him? Y'all don't want me to name him. Uh, <laughs> Pastor, you sound like you've been at the package store. No. <laughs> Just grew up in the boot house. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But, but he said, now, don't drink no wine. Don't take no dollar shot. Right. <laughs> don't eat no pork. That's right. No pork chops. Right. It's in your Bible, y'all. It's in your Bible. I'm not making it up. If you read your Bible, y'all, I'm always speaking the truth. Yeah. And uh, don't let no, once you can see, don't let no razor touch his head. Right. I would have been messed up, y'all. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Don't let no race because he shall be a Nazarite or he shall be consecrated to God or a prince with God from birth. Amen. God said, what, what I got, I don't want it contaminated by the things of the world and by the things of man and the things that are unclean because he's going to be set aside for my use. Don't you know there are some people that God set aside just for himself? Amen. And then after she got the news, she left and went and told her husband, look here. I saw a man and he told me I'm going I'm to birth a child. Can you imagine how happy they would be when they finally got a word that God going to do it? Yeah. Have you ever got a word that you've been waiting on that God going to do it? Yeah. And, and it encourages you? Yeah. And, and he said, well, what a man at? And when he went there, the angel of the Lord, the Lord himself was gone. So he went and he prayed to the Lord. The, ain't, the man that was here sent him back. Yeah. He came back. Uh -huh. And he repeated the same words. Uh -huh. But he said, don't go nowhere. We want to give you, we want to fix something for you. So they came yeah. back with an offering. Now, if God give you a word that he's going to do something for you, you need to give God something back. See, a lot of us take God's blessings and then don't give nothing back to God for what he's done for us. They fixed it up. They fixed up a, 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 a goat and uh, they, they put it on the stones and they, they lit it on fire and the angel of the Lord first they asked, what's your name? And he said, why do you ask my name seeing that it is wonderful or it's a secret or it's incomprehensible? Your mind can't fathom my name. Y'all ain't with me. But what they say, my name, if I told you, it would blow your mind. Yeah. If, if God showed you just a, 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 a tad bit of who he is, your mind would, would just go blank. You couldn't handle the fullness of God. But the Bible says here in the translation that his name in, in this, when he said it's secret or it's wonderful, when I read my Bible in Isaiah 9 and 6, the Bible says this, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father. So we know by his name who it was. Yes. Yes. It was the pre-incarnate Christ saying that when, now when the world speaks, yes. you know it's true. Yes. 
when Jesus tells you something, you can bank on it. Now, if we say something to you now, we may or may not can fulfill it. But God give us a word through a person, you can count on that word. But I've heard a lot of folk give me a word. I'm with you. I love you. Then a little bit later, don't see him. Uh, my feelings don't change. Okay. But God ain't like that. God say, i never leave you. Nor forsake you. When you're crying, I'll be there to wipe your tears. Uh, when you're lonely, I'll hug up with you. When won't nobody else touch you, I'll touch you. When, won't nobody, when the doctor say, I can't do nothing, here I am say, I can do it. I can do all things. Good God Almighty. Are y'all about to make me hoop up in here? Look at him. But the Bible says they went back. And how many know when you get a word that you got to do something with the word? Yeah. Don't be a hearer of the word only, but be a doer of the word. Yeah. See, a lot of folks get a word and they just think that God just going to automatically zap and do it. But you don't want to take the word and walk out the word. You want God to supernaturally do it without your involvement. You and I must do what God has said he was going to do, but he going to do it through us. Now, I don't know about you. But there's only one man that got here without any involvement, if you know what I mean, without any intimacy happening. But guess what? Even Mary had to get intimate with the word that Gabriel gave her so that Jesus, she said, be unto me according to your Holy Ghost now come and overtake me. Put the Lord in my womb so that he can be birthed and save us all. Good God Almighty. See, Manoah had to go home and he had to talk sweet. Yes, sir. Manoah had to say, look here, gal. Yes, sir. I know you're a little old now, but boy, you sure is still fine to me. Good God Almighty, you get sweeter and sweeter every day. See, Manoah had to go home and talk good to his wife. Y'all ain't with me. See, ain't no woman gonna let you just push up on her and you ain't talking sweet. You better be bringing some money home. The flower, perfume, a dress, a pocketbook. You got to do something. Yeah, 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 look, look at your Bible. Okay. Go home and, and act a fool and think that there will be some closeness. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> Mess around, there'll be an empty stove. A cold bed. With a partition of a pillow between you and her. <laughs> See, we, we, we doing marriage counseling this morning. Amen. That's all right. That, that's it. That's why a lot of stuff go wrong. Preacher won't tell you the truth and make it practical. Manoah must have went home and said some sweet things because next thing we know, here goes Samson. <laughs> Amen. Look here. After that, Samson came. The Bible says that God started to move upon him uh, between Zorah and Ishtar. And, uh, and the Spirit of the Lord would come on him from time to time and all of a sudden he would get strong. Amen. And, and uh, despite what you might think in your mind, Samson was no muscular fellow. Uh, I, I dare to say that Samson kind of looked like me. <laughs> Just straight up and down. He, he was no big bulging fellow. But he, you know, he looked like me, like he couldn't whoop nothing. But run up on me. <laughs> Try me, baby. <laughs> the Spirit of the Lord will come upon me. And you will feel these paws upon you. Amen. Let me, okay. <laughs> but, but Samson didn't look like he could whoop nothing. But, but God will take the weak things of this world. To take care of the mighty things. See, God loves to take what men look at and say, I can't do nothing with it. But God can take it and use it. The Bible says that he, every now and then, he would go down to Timnath and he saw, he saw a woman. Uh -huh. And, and uh, the Bible says that the children of Israel were not supposed to intermarry with the people of Canaan. Yes, right. They were supposed to stick with their, with their own uh, tribe. But, but his parents say, now, why you, why you want these want the Canaanite, want these Philistine woman? I ain't, ain't not the women in the tribe of Dan good enough for you? But let me tell you something. God will even use your waywardness and your foolishness and my foolishness and our craziness and even when our flesh wants stuff that, that we should not want, 
God is so sovereign that he can get in your foolishness and still do his work. That does not mean that he ain't going to deal with us and judge us and deal with our foolishness, but we can't stop God from what he's going to do. So they didn't realize that God was seeking an occasion to deliver his people. So he went down and uh, the Bible said when he saw her, Samson started talking to her. Now here's a woman who is a Philistine. They were not originated from the land of Canaan. They were actually foreigners. That's where we get the name now Palestine, which has actually come from Philistine. And so, uh, but the people from Philist Philistia actually learned the Shemitic language. So when Samson went and talked to her, he could talk to her in the Shemitic language because she picked it up even though she was from a different people. So when Samson showed up, remember I told you you got to open your mouth up and talk if you want something? Yeah. Samson went in and he spit game to her as a young folk say. Alright, so Samson showed up and said, uh, Boker. Y'all just let me look a little Hebrew this morning. Boker, good morning. And it's Shem, Shem Sean. What he's saying is, good morning, my name is Samson. <laughs> y'all y'all with me? See, see, a brother gotta show up and he gotta be cordial. Yes, sir. Good morning. I, I really love your dress. I like that. Love your hair. What lovely eyes you have. My goodness, look at your skin. Absolutely radiant. See, some of y'all women, y'all feeling good already. <laughs> Amen. See, but look at when somebody encourages you, see certain characteristics in you that other folks overlook because they ain't got a good eye. See, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. What might look good to you might not look good to somebody else. Honey, she too dog. Kind of just right for me. I like chocolate. <laughs> He too slim. Oh, good. I like slim, man. See, it all depends on the taste of the person who looking. But you know what I like about God? God made some of us slim just like me, some of us a little wider, some of us medium size. Because he know we all got different tastes. Yeah. Amen. So what, what you might like, you might like that. Hey, don't look too hot to me. Okay, y'all, let me move on. Y'all know I'm being real, though. Because some of y'all don't like slim men. Some of y'all don't like slim women. So back when I was coming up, baby, you side five, I just walked right past you. <laughs> but some of y'all, big man come by you, he mm, ain't even my type. Ooh, bald head, long, Jesus. Thank you for letting this how I fall out. I like to see your glory reflected off his bald head, Lord. Y'all ain't with me. I know y'all been saying that preacher crazy. Yes, I am. Amen. But I'm real, though. Look at here. So uh, they went down and Samson got engaged to the woman. When it came time from the marriage, now look at this. God will do this. Came time to marry. And on the way back home, Samson killed a lion. When the lion died, bees got on the inside of the lion made honey. So when he came back through, he scooped up some honey from the lion, put it in his mouth, and then when he gave a riddle to the people of uh, Philistia during the wedding feast, and he said, I got a riddle for you. He said, you know what? Out of something strong came something sweet. He was telling about how he killed the lion, but didn't nobody know it, neither his mother or his father, only him. Uh, but, but he said, now, if you can solve this riddle, I'll give you 30 changes of clothes. Nobody knew the riddle, but he, but, uh, the people of Felicia say had told his wife that if you don't tell us, we're going to kill, burn you and your daddy. Mm -hmm. So she pressed on Samson, just, just kept pressing on him. After seven days, she finally got the answer. And when he came back to the feast from the final day, they told him. And Samson said, look here, if you want to plow with my heifer. Yeah, it's in your Bible. It's in the Bible. He said, if you wouldn't have plowed with my helper, look in your Bible. I got King James Version. He said, you wouldn't have got this river. Yeah. Now, you know a joke will get mad when you start fooling with it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm about ready to cut you now. But, but guess what? He was taking occasion to whoop up on him. So when, uh, what happened was is they burnt up Samson's wife and his father-in-law. Right. Put them on fire. Samson went and caught 300 foxes tied their tails together, put a, a, a torch on them, and sent it through their wheat fields. 
burnt up everything. Now, it's not like us today when we can pull out a $5 bill, $10 bill, $50 bill, $100 bill. They, they uh, got money based on, they were an agricultural society. So the way they made their money is they grew food and they exchanged stuff for one another. So now, guess what? Now they mad. You don't burn up our food, we feel we ain't got nothing to eat, we ain't gonna have no money, we coming to get you. So this is what they do, they go up, and I'm setting it up, because it's gonna roll quick after this. They went to the children of Judah, and they said, look here, we gonna go kill all of them. So they went up and pitched against Judah, against the Danites, and they said, look here, why are you coming up? We're everything good? We, 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 we doing what y'all want us to do. When we, when we grow stuff, we bring it to y'all. How many know that some people can get comfortable in their mess. People can get comfortable with the devil dominating their life. Some people can get comfortable being bound. And they'd rather give in than to be free. So, so look, the children of Israel had been so oppressed for 40 years that they would just rather give in to the enemy than fight. And look at this. They say, look here. If you don't want us to get y'all, y'all get bring Samson to us. Right. Samson said, look here. Take me down now. He said, the only thing I need, uh, y'all swear to me that y'all won't kill me. We ain't going to kill you. We just want to give you over so they can leave us alone. Right. Y'all ain't with me. Some of y'all telling the devil, look, look here. You can have them. Just leave me alone. Right. I'm going to stop praying if you leave me alone. You can just have them. Have the devil ever got on you so tough that you stopped praying for the folks you love? All right, y'all quiet this morning. Sam, they tied Samson up and Samson stayed tied. And then when he got where he needed to be, he broke them things off. Don't you know that there are people in your own family, in your own church, who saw they Christian who will sell you out? Amen. Will sell you out. The very folks who you take communion with. The same folks you pray with. Is the same folks who will turn you over to the devil. Y'all ain't with me. Now, here we go. We're getting into the meat of the sermon now. And the Bible says that, that when, uh, when they had him tied up, that he broke loose. And when he broke loose, look at this. Remember when I told you that Samson would probably look slimmer like me? And, 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 uh, but just because it looked like it can't do nothing don't mean it can't do nothing. God can get in anything and bring strength to it. Look at the contradiction. Slim, but he's strong. Love women. Not God type women. Heathen women. Yet God can still use them. Y'all ain't with me. Can, can I really be real with y'all? Have y'all ever said about some preacher, I, I know he ain't no good. Amen. Why in the world God even let him stand up? God know what he is and what she is. But it ain't going to stop God from saving, folks. But it don't exempt them or me or anybody else from doing right. Y'all ain't with me. But the Bible says this. Look at here. Look at your contradiction. Broke, but God keep paying the bills. Sick, but God still use you to heal other folks. Good God Almighty. Ain't went past eighth grade, just finished high school, and yet you know more of the Bible than the folk been to seminary. You get more revelation than they got, and they been in school for 20 years, and got the degrees to show it, Yet the power of God moved through you more mildly than it moved through them, and yet they mad at you. Don't get mad at me. You spent time in the classroom, and I spent time in the throne room. You got your chest stuck out, unbound low, saying, Lord, give it to me. I can't do it without you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I, I can't, guess what? I can't breathe without you, Lord. I can't even comprehend your word. That's the Holy Ghost. Give it to me, Lord. And then they mad at you. Look at here. Amen. Now here goes Samson. Can, can you imagine the, the Danites, the Israelites? Samson ain't no good. He just keep messing with all them old loose women. But yet Samson whooping them folks off y'all head. Yes, see, that's some folk talk about you. 
Honey, I remember when she used to drink and run around. Now she praying them demons off of you. Y'all with me? That's me saying, Lord, keep her so that she stay on your side. Y'all, y'all with me? I know that right. I remember that young lady told me. <laughs> she said, I can't believe you know preacher. I said, me either. <laughs> I said, I ain't necessarily won't do this. But when God tell you to do it, you ain't got no choice. She said, mm, uh, all folks. I said the same thing. Mm, uh, all folks. <laughs> Then she want a hug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how you know God real. <laughs> Go on about your business. You interrupting God's work. <laughs> See, you remember T, but this ain't, uh, this ain't T now. This Pastor Troy, baby. <laughs> See, you got some old names, too. And that gonna come a time you're going to have to not do this, but you're going to have to... You're going to have to turn the shoulder, put down the bottle, hang up the phone, stop gossiping. Y'all ain't with me. But, but, but look here, let me move on. The Bible says this. Here come the fight. Now, here come all these folks. Uh, Philipp, the Philistines coming after uh, Samson. But the Bible says he found a jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand, took it, and slew a thousand men therewith. Now look here. God will take something that's old and dead. They can't do what it used to do. Now donkeys on ass were used to carry heavy weight over long distances. But the donkey ain't no good no more. Because it's dead. God will take a dead relationship. He'll take dead stuff that's already going to be in his presence. And ain't nothing left but the words grandma told you. But the words are still in your heart. Grandma say, Lord, if you just keep your hand in God's hand, he'll take care of you. But grandma's dead and gone. But God, look here. Is, look at that. He found a new jawbone. She must have just passed away. And guess what? A new jawbone meaning that it's dead, but it's still moist and fresh. Yeah. Grandma's gone, but she's freshly gone, and yet the words God have in your ear. Yeah. So now take your hand, grab them words out of your heart, and when the enemy come at you, start swinging. Yeah. Take all the promises that grandma said God came through her with from the word and you start swinging it at the end. He is a way maker. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Guess what? The Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear. Guess what? He will lay me beside still water. You know, I know I ain't doing right, but he said he will lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Guess what? Take dead stuff and work with it, baby. Look here. The jawbone. God, God set it up so that the donkey would die right on time. And that when Samson got to that spot and he got in trouble, what he needed, he didn't need it alive, he needed it dead. See, a lot of times we cry about things when things die, when a relationship dies, when folks die. It may be God is going to use it in a new way that he couldn't use it when it was alive. Look at that relationship that died years ago. God going to use that as a stepping stone for you to get through this one. But if you didn't have that experience back then, how are you going to apply it to right now? Look at here. That's good. Here, here go this dead thing in your hand. And other folks would pass by. Look at that old dead donkey. <laughs> See, a lot of folks passing by you looking at her, she ain't no good, just dead. Uh -huh. But look at here. It could be they passing over something that could help them. Amen. Good Amen. God Almighty. Amen. Yeah, I know it. I know it. Look at here. <laughs> oh dead donkey. What, what good is a donkey anyway? Ask for lack. When he was going. To pronounce a curse on the children of Israel. And the angel of the Lord was standing in his way. And the donkey saw the angel. Good God Almighty. When the donkey saw the angel. The donkey held up. 
black started whooping and beating on the donkey. Then God opened up the mouth of the donkey and said, look here, man, why you keep hitting on me? Amen. And he started talking to a donkey. I don't know about y'all, but if I'm riding a donkey and the donkey started talking to me, I'm getting off that joke. <laughs> when, when you get up off of it? Yeah. I'm whooping it in the dark and turn around and say, why are you whooping me? But I ain't whooping you no more. I'm up off you, bro. <laughs> God can use stuff that can't talk and make it talk. God can use children to keep you out of foolishness. See, some of us, all these children they got here when things were right. Truth be told, I guarantee most of them here didn't conquer things. We did things the right way. But sometimes God will bring stuff just to slow your tail down. God, not know that that would be a child right there. And this child need to get here in the time that they need to get here because this child will actually preach to you and guess what? Get you saved through. See, a lot of y'all wouldn't came to the Lord if the child wouldn't be here. Because the child make you cry out loud. Joker ain't paying no child support. And you start calling on the name of the Lord. I'm preaching now, baby. I'm hooping now. Y'all just don't know it. Look here. Took the jawbone and slew a thousand men that were. How in the world can one man slay a thousand? The book of Joshua, chapter 23, verse 10 says this. One man of you should chase a thousand. That's right. For the Lord fighteth for you as he promised you. You know what? God can take just you. Yeah. And whoop up on a lot of folks that's come against his people. All God needs is your availability. Look here. He whooped a thousand. He didn't whoop them all at once. He whooped some of them. And then some of them started running when he saw them start whooping their head. See, some of the de demons know that if you start spitting the word at one little demon and they start running, they start running. But you got to be a demon chaser. Don't run from them. You run them jumpers with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Just say in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. In the power of the Holy Ghost. Come up out of them. See, what? guess what? Once you start working and doing the works of the Lord, demons start recognizing who you are. That's Paul. Paul cast out a spirit of python, of divination out of a young lady. And if somebody else tried to do the same thing, they said, Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. Paul, we know. But who are you? Yes, you better know what you're fooling with. Amen. Look at here. Yes. Bible said, here goes Samson with the jawbone. Now, can you picture this? Y'all know I'm animated. Samson, skinny as all get out. But whooping up here. Yeah. Now, I don't know about y'all, but you know, us people of color, we know them like to talk when we fight. Come on! <laughs> yeah, come get some of this right here. I don't know about y'all, but you know, if I'm getting ready to get in something, you know. <laughs> my grandma said, she worked there. Well, she said, baby, I ain't even talking. I just went up. <laughs> she said, I ain't got no time to be talking. I want to knock it out. <laughs> but I like to let another joker know I'm coming at you. Look here, come on up in here and get some of this, baby. <laughs> Santa was talking while he was whooping their head. <laughs> Good God <laughs> Almighty. <laughs> The Bible says that Samson said, look, what, look at your Bible, it says Samson said, with a jawbone on the ass, heaps upon heaps, with a jaw on the ass have I slain a thousand men. The Bible says this, you shall have the fruit of your lips. So look here, if you want to see it change, open up your mouth. Samson said, bring on a thousand, I'm going to whoop each and every one of you. See, back when I came up in the hood, when, when, when the joker got ready to fight, he said, now after I whoop you, go bring your folks back. <laughs> See, what you and I must tell the enemy, after I whoop this one, I'm going to whoop the next one that you see. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The same way, Lord, that you saved this rascal right here. Now save this new rascal that just got here. You and I must talk what we want to see. See, that's why y'all get a little crazy at me because I say, oh, I see the new building. I see the area for the children. See, guess what? I talk what I want to see. Lord, I talk what I want to see. Yes. Even before I start pastor, I said, Lord, I thank you that I'm a pastor. Yes. But I didn't wait till I started ministering to folk before he sent me to a church. Yes. See, first of all, you got to start doing something. Yes. When I'm going to preach, when I'm going to deep, when, I'm gonna, when are you going to start doing what you say you gifted to do? Yes. You know why I started preaching at? Nursing home. 
prison. Corners. The neighborhood. What's up, man? You know Jesus? You look like you the man. I ain't a man, dog. I'm just a man with the word in my mouth about Jesus, dog. Jesus want to give you money and then, you know, if you get with Jesus, man, Jesus can give you money and then you won't have to worry about going to jail. Put that bag down, dog. Right. See, you see what I'm saying? I was already ministering. I was already pastoring. When folk had problems, I went and talked to them. I saw them. And I did it for a long time. That's my wife. So God said, I see you doing already what folks in the position ain't even doing. So and guess what? Don't get mad at me. Start doing it. God will look if you'll be faithful over all. He'll make you what? Rulers over me. So the only thing that holding you up ain't your pastor, ain't your deacon, ain't your church. Maybe it's you. It's you not doing what you say you gifted to do. All these opportunities we got to here to serve. All these sick folk need visitation. Take that jawbone and start slinging it at them demons so that they can raise off that sick bed. Look here. God will, guess what? We must use what's available to us that there's no more life in. It was left behind to put in your hand to allow the hand of the Lord to guide you. What is it that's dead? But you won't use it because it looked dead. Look in your life, and I gotta look at my life. What is dead that it seemed like it can't be used, but the enemy on your tail? You calling to God, and God saying it's right there. When you gonna use it? Lord, I got all these issues. Bible study, right there. Every Thursday, 7 o'clock. And you don't even use it. And God said the answer to your prayer is at Bible study. You looking for a word, the word coming right at Bible study. You praying for something, you got other prayer wars who come in agreement with you. Two of you agree on anything, it shall be done. Guess what? It right there. And you ain't even picking it up. And you keep crying to God and God just saying it right there. It too far. Okay. Lord, it take an hour to get there. It dog. I'm tired when I get all work. Lord said, okay. It right there if you want to get out your problem, though. There it is. And it could be when you, I ain't got no gas. It could be Pastor Troy got $50 to give you when you do get here. And y'all know me, I'm just stupid enough and crazy enough to do whatever God tell me to do. I can have 50 in my pocket. I don't care if God said give it up. I'm going to give it up, baby, because I know if I give, it shall be given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall man give it to your bosom with the same amount that you meet with all, it shall be measured back unto you again. <laughs> See, if you drive down here on faith, God will give it to you by faith. If you come up here in faith and ask for a healing, God will heal you by faith. If you ask for deliverance by faith, guess what? God will give it to you by faith. Guess what? After Samson got through swinging. Now, the Holy Ghost will give you power to do what you can't do in the natural. Amen. And as a matter of fact, your physical body will be so well out you can't do it, but the Holy Ghost will make your physical body go beyond what it has the ability to do. Yes. Have you ever been so tired to say, Lord, good God Almighty, I've been working all day, been slaving, I got to cook this dinner for these children? <laughs> And you be over the stove about swing and the Holy and say, Lord, help me. And the Holy Ghost kick in and you start singing. We, oh, good God. And then that, then that come on, that anointing come on. Hey! And then next thing you know, you will cook the whole meal in a pie. Lord. Kissing everybody when they come through the door. Hey, honey! Before you couldn't even stand up. That's the Holy Ghost. All right, I'm just saying. <laughs> then old man starts smiling. Guys, you feeling pretty good tonight, ain't you? <laughs> and then you start swearing. Yeah. It's a happy home when the Holy Ghost show up in the house. That's what we need more in the house is the Holy Ghost. Folks who tired, they fed up, but call on the Lord for help. That's the problem. The answer is in the house. 
but you ain't using it. Good God, I'm like, look here, move on. The Bible says that it came to pass when he made an end of speaking that he cast away the jawbone out of his house and called that place Ramoth Lehi. You must name the place where God has worked for you. You must remember it. Remember the day, the time, the hour, the place. Because it's going to be a testimony for somebody else. I remember my grandmother told me that she lost a child to polio. And she said, I didn't even feel like I could live no more. She said, baby, I gave up. She said, I just, I ain't want to live no more. She said, but one day I just, I just said, Lord, help me. And she said, I started to get better. And she said, and then through the years, I was able to help other folks because I've been through it. When God gives us victory over something, we must remember it so that we can share it with other people. Look here. Rama Lehi actually means this. Rama means a height or a high place. Lehi actually means a job. God will take you from a place where you are in great opposition, raise you up on high and give you victory when it seems like you ain't going to win. But you end up, you were in the valley, but you end up on high with victory. He can take you from the sick bed to standing straight up laying hands on somebody else that they come up where you are. He can take you from raising five kids with no husband, one job, barely getting through, so that you can tell that young lady, baby, you can make it if you put your hand in the Lord's hand. See, God gives us victories as a witness to other folk. And the Bible said when he got finished whooping up on them, he cast the jaw on them away. Y'all, when you finish and God give you victory, that thing which is dead, leave it dead. Yes. Y'all need me to break that down some more? Yes. Do I need to make it plain to you? Yes. I'm going to make it plain to you. I'm going to make it plain. Now, if it's dead, that means that there's no more breath, no more spirit in it, correct? Alright? Now, I'm going to help some of y'all. It was meant to help you get victory from the enemy. But after you get victory, leave that dead thing, that dead man, that dead woman, that dead job, that dead relationship right where it need to be. Don't try to carry dead stuff with you because it'll be dead weight. Don't try to do like Jesus and do it like Lazarus. Come forth. No, it's dead. Leave it dead. If God want to raise it up, he'll tell you to raise it up. See, and a lot of y'all having problems because y'all trying to uh, lay hands on it and raise up what God ain't saying he ain't going to raise up. God said it was, it, it was dead simply for you to get victory over this one thing. What is it that you hooked up with that was really meant for a one-time thing to get you over something, but you still got it and with it? And you're wondering, why this keep happening? You hooked up with a dead thing. Ain't no life in it. Ain't no Holy Ghost in it. If the Holy Ghost was in it, it would bring forth life. He's the spirit of life. You can't get life out of dead things. It was like my, like my mama and my grandma told me. Good mother, that girl was so fine that it didn't make sense. <laughs> it was so fine when I used to walk with it, boy, even the other man just look, like, how in the world that skinny rascal get hooked? But it was dead. It was walking with me, but it was dead. It was fine, but it was dead. It was shapely, but it was dead. <laughs> High heels, but dead. Curves, but dead. Long hair, but dead. What about you? Taste good, but it's dead. Smoke good, but it's dead. Sound good, but it's dead. All right. Look at here. 
cast it away. Amen. He named, look him, he put it down, named the place, left it. <laughs> put it down, named the place, and left it. I met you in real, I'm going to keep you in real. Now I'm gone. Met you in Clark County, leave you in Clark County, I'm gone. Hey Amen. Or oh, it could be washing the wheels. Look here. After you battle for so long, sometimes it's not necessarily the battle, it's after the battle. Because you are so emotionally distraught and depleted that you really can't go on because you don't gave so much just for the battle. And sometimes it is not the battle, it's after the battle is finished. When you don't have nothing left, you exhausted. The Bible says, and he was sore, third meaning that he was so thirsty, as a matter of fact, exceedingly, that it didn't make sense. Tongue clinging to his mouth almost. And he said, Thou hast given this great deliverance. You saved me. At the hand of thy servant, now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised. Lord, there's some more I got to fight, but. I don't kill a thousand, but there's still five thousand more. I need, I need to be refreshed. Lord, I don't fall. And it matters ten years. I'm tired. Lord, I've been sick for so long and I've been I've been battling and you kept me here, but I'm tired. Lord, I've endured the lies and the manipulation. And I still pray for him. But I'm tired now. Lord, you told me to just give and it be given unto me and I don't gave out. I ain't got nothing else. I'm tired. I don't want to give no more. You told me to love it like you love it. I ain't got nothing left in the tank. What I'm going to do, Lord? Lord, you need to refresh me so that I can keep going. I don't pour it all out. I ain't got nothing left. See, if a cup empty, you can't pour nothing in nobody else's cup. And a lot of us are trying to pour out from an empty cup into another cup when we need refreshing ourselves. You and I, when we are thirsty, that's a vulnerable time. Because a lot of times, folks will pour stuff in your cup when you thirsty, but don't mean you no good. As a matter of fact, that's the time when you really need to worry that you make the right choice. You need to go before God because when you are thirsty, you drink anything. Now look here, I'm going to tell y'all a story. I don't mind telling a story. I was a young fellow. Didn't care nothing about the club because I don't like smoke and I don't like to sweat too much because I like smelling good. Y'all know me, I like smelling good. Now I'm going to look along. And, and, you know, and smoke mess with my allergies. And I, I don't like having to say, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I, and my, my best friend, love him. Good heart. He said, look here, T, man. He, look, he said, you know I'm going to get drunk. <laughs> and you know you my designated driver. I said, man, every time. He said, man, do you want me to go crash into somebody? And I give in. I go, no, nah, man, I don't want you to hurt them. I don't want you to get no DUI. So I drive. He said, you know, I'm going to stop getting you your chicken that you like. Y'all know I love chicken. He stopped giving me a bucket of chicken. I drive him wherever he want to go, Atlanta, wherever. All I wanted want was a bucket of chicken and a Pepsi. Well, we went to the store. They ain't had no Pepsi. All I had was that bucket of chicken. And now, my boy had a 40. I was so thirsty. I said, Lord Jesus, I'm, I'm so thirsty. Oh, you know I don't like no beer, no liquor. I don't like none of that. Boy, we drove to Atlanta. And, and with no store in between. And that chicken grease and that country chicken just started sticking to my mouth. I was so thirsty. I don't even like the smell of beer. But all of a sudden, that beer started looking so good. And I said, Lord, just help me hold out 10 more miles till we get to the store. Because but I'm telling you now, when you get to Conyers, and you know, when you leave Ash and going up 7, 8, you get to the spot where ain't no store. I was so thirsty, and that Bill kept looking at me, and he kept laughing at me. He said, T, you, you want a little drink? I said, no. I said, man, I said, I'm so thirsty. I, don't know what to do. I said, good Lord, I'm so thirsty. 
<laughs> he said, Team, I ain't going to get you. I said, I can't drink no more, man. I said, man, I don't see what alcohol. Alcohol don't went through my family. Don't hurt a lot of people. I don't even want to taste. But I was so thirsty. Some of you, just like I was driving up 78, you thirsty. And right before you is something that can quench your thirst, but it ain't no God. Amen. Get what I did. I took that bill, held my nose, pulled over to the side, and took me a good swig. And it was so nasty. But boy, did it quench my thirst. <laughs> But after it quenched my thirst, I was trying to spit that taste up all the way to a line. What I'm trying to tell you is something false that is not of God can't truly quench your thirst. You have to go to God and allow him to quench your thirst. Look at here. God claimed the hollow place of the jaw and there came water there out. And when he had drunk, his spirit came and he revived where he called the name of, thereof in Hokor, which is in Lehi. In Hokor actually means a uh, fountain of one calling. Notice that he dropped the dead thing before. And it's only when God moves in that dead thing that life can come out of it. So you don't go drink out of it if God don't bring a fountain of life out of it. The Bible says this. For those who believe, out of their belly should flow rivers of living water. If the Holy Ghost ain't in them jokes, leave their dead self right where they at. Because it's only when they are born again, when God resurrect them, regenerate them through the power of his Holy Ghost, can you then drink from that fountain. And if the Holy Ghost has not regenerated them in the name of Jesus Christ, leave them jokers right where they are. But when the Holy Ghost get up in them, then you can call and say, Lord, I'm thirsty. And God say, there's a fountain right there. Amen. And you can drink out of it. And sweet water come out of it. But how in the world are you going to get sweet water from somebody who built them? Look at here. God split the tooth of that donkey that was dead and brought water out of a donkey. That's my, oh Lord, that's a miracle. God split the tooth of the donkey and brought forth water. Y'all, y'all missing it. Every single man or woman, true man or woman of God who stand out here, don't been a donkey in their life. If they say they ain't been a donkey, they lying. Let God be true and every man alive. Y'all, I've been a straight up donkey all my life. Till Jesus came here. And he still had to cleanse me from day to day. But God would split the tooth or the mouth of a donkey. And give you a refreshing water of the word to quench your thirst. But will you drink from the mouth of a donkey that's been dead but has been resurrected? That's the question. God opened up that place. God refreshed him. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistine 20 years. It could be that you're overstepping. Good God Almighty. You passing over someone or something that God is using because you think it ain't no good. Because you think it ain't no good. You think God can't use it. But maybe God letting it look like it looked like to test your faith. A lot of times he puts stuff in front of us and it don't look like what we want. And God say, there it is. There's your deliverance. There's your healing. Good God Almighty. Come here, Mark. Come on, bro. You know what? God, God, God will provide. Yeah, yeah you sit down. That's the, you, you keep messing around. They keep giving. I'm going to keep giving too. <laughs> See, that's what, that's what a good preacher should do. 
As God give him, he should disperse back out to the people, correct? Amen. Amen. Stand. Stand with me. God gave victory to Samson through something that was dead. He said, Lord, how, how can I close this out? There was something else that, that died. It's amazing that, uh, uh, it's amazing that a thousand actually comes from the word Aleph. Aleph. Jesus, and it also springs back to the word, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is where we get the word alphabet. Jesus said in the book of Revelation, I am Aleph and Tav, or the be first and the, and the last. Jesus said, look here. He said, I was dead, but now I'm alive. See, if you will believe in the one who was dead, and use him to gain entrance into the face of the Father through salvation, through Christ. Now that which is dead ain't dead no more. And he sits on the right hand of the Father ever living to make intercession for you. With him, good God Almighty, he'll be your battle axe. He'll be your rock in a weary land. Good God Almighty. Boy, if I was an old preacher, I'd sing up something. But we got to do a little something after this. He'll be a shelter in a time of, in a time of storm. Are you going to pass over Jesus because you think he's just a man? And you don't believe that he was God in the flesh who came down to live a sinless life to pay the price for our sins. Don't pass over the jawbone that spoke the word of the Father to you. Too many demons being released in the time we live in for you not to have the word of the Lord. The Redeemer, our salvation, our help, and our strength. If you're looking for a church home, as the Spirit of the Lord guides you, we invite you to join this local fellowship. You got to call on Him and ask Him, is this the place? It's decision time. This may be the place where he desires to refresh you. Amen. Amen. Amen.